Australian authorities have adopted the weakest possible version of the precautionary principle. This merely says that a lack of scientific certainty should not be used as an excuse for inaction in the face of potentially serious or irreversible environmental damage. However, other excuses can be used, and the most common excuse for inaction is the cost of action. Moreover, the only action that is required under this weak version of the precautionary principle is either further research or risk assessment. More rigorous versions of the precautionary principle require action above and beyond further research. That is, action to avoid or reduce any scientifically plausible threats of serious or irreversible environmental damage. In Australia, although lip service is paid to the precautionary principle, when it comes to protecting the environment, generally a risk assessment and risk management approach is normally adopted. However, risk assessment is designed for situations when the dangers are known and the probabilities can be accurately assigned to them. Risk assessment is preferred because it enables proponents to assign numbers to the risks and seemingly place an objective value on them and so compare them to the benefits. The natural response to dangers is to avoid them rather than balance them against the benefits of going ahead. The exception to this is the situation of financial or business risk where people are willing to risk a certain amount of money in order to make a lot more. However, environmental risks are very different from financial risks. There are many ways that a society can make money and if one method is not available because of various limits, be they physical or societal or moral, then other methods can be found to make money. And if money is lost as a result of this risk or gamble, then not too much is lost because there will be other opportunities. This is not the case with environmental risk. There is only one environment, and once the species is gone, it's gone forever, and each loss is cumulative. far better to avoid the risks and find other ways to make that money. In this video I will be examining a case study of pinbone poisoning of rabbits. There are two poisons normally used for killing rabbits in Australia, pindone and 1080. Neither is target specific and both can readily kill other animals including humans, pets and wildlife. Pindone is used in urban and urban fringe areas because it takes longer to kill animals and there is an antidote so if children or pets take it they can be saved. This does not prevent the poisoning of wildlife and it is for this reason that Pindone is not supposed to be used where there are significant native wildlife populations. Pindone has been declared ineligible for registration in the United States and it's not used in the European Union. However, in New Zealand it is registered and widely used for killing rabbits and it has even been deliberately used to kill possums and wallabies which are considered pests in New Zealand. In Australia, pendone is used for rabbits and possums and wallabies are assumed to be safe from it. It is normally mixed with either oats or carrots for rabbit baiting. Both types can be purchased in pre-mixed, ready-to-use products. Pindone is a poison that causes rabbits to suffer a slow and painful death. But it's also likely to kill non-target species including antichinus, possums, bandicoots, Animals and birds that eat dying rabbits and rabbit carcasses are also at risk, including eagles and owls. In 2002, the National Registration Authority for Agricultural and Veterinary Chemicals did a review of Pindone. The review found 
that whilst birds and native animals share a similar susceptibility to pin donors, rabbits, there have been few studies on the impact of pin dome on native wildlife. Although the review found that pindone poses a manageable risk to non-target species, throughout the report there are references to the limited availability of scientific data. With regard to the persistency of pindone residues, the report admitted that its findings were very tentative and that firm conclusions could not be reached. The report went on to say Quote, few specific data are available to determine the likely toxicity of pindone to Australian native fauna or even to standard test organisms. Available information indicates that a number of native species, macropods, bandicoots, raptors and a range of birds are likely to share the high sensitivity of rabbits to pindone. The limited data that the report referred to included laboratory studies that found that owls could be poisoned by eating pindone contaminated mice carcasses and that raptors seem to have a high sensitivity to pindone and rabbits based on results for wedge-tailed eagles and brown goshawks. At most at risk according to the report, were quolls and antichinus. But the report also stated, quote, Western grey kangaroos, southern brown bandicoots and crested pigeons are confirmed casualties of pindone poisoning campaigns in Western Australia. Swamp wallabies and young cattle have been killed in New South Wales. According to the report, quote, some non-target mortality is always likely to occur during control operations but the impact on populations is difficult to measure and has rarely been studied. It can be argued that occasional non-target mortalities should be seen as a reasonable compromise. Clearly this is a situation where the precautionary principle applies. There's plausible scientific evidence that pindone poses a threat to native wildlife, including several species of owl, uh, the, including the barking owl, the spotted tailed quoll, the little eagle, the southern brown bandicoot, and the long nosed potteroo. There is not enough scientific knowledge to gauge the magnitude or the probability of the risk to native wildlife. However, instead of applying the precautionary principle in the case of Pindone, the Australian authorities apply a risk assessment and risk management approach. Risk assessment in this case is rudimentary at best. For example, the Yerubadala Shire Council regularly undertakes Pindone baiting of rabbits on council land in its area in coordination with the Livestock Health and Pest Authority, that is the LHPA, which recently became part of the local land services in New South Wales. The Yerubadala is a rural area on the far south coast of New South Wales, supporting a variety of agricultural production and many small land holdings with a mixture of open fields, bush blocks, lakes, swampy areas and national parks. This coastal zone includes a range of fauna habitats and a wide variety of native species coexisting in close proximity. The council claims pindone use is in response to complaints by residents about rabbits digging up their gardens and eating their plants. However, the council has not undertaken any risk assessment of the dangers pindone poses to native wildlife in the area. Instead, it relies on advice from the LHPA. However, it appears that the LHPA does not conduct any formal or comprehensive risk assessment in areas that harbour wildlife. The LHPA also coordinates local residents to do pin dome poisoning and can even require local landholders 
to use Pingdome on their land. According to a senior technical policy officer of the Office of Environment and Heritage, quote, the onus is on the user to do a risk assessment beforehand to determine ways of minimising the risks of non-target animals. An LHPA officer told a short course in Maria, which I attended, that the risk assessment required by landholders before Pindone Bates are laid can be just a good hard think. In some sensitive areas, the LHPA claims to have done its own risk assessment, but it's unknown whether this is more than its own good hard think. However, before using LHPA supplied Pindone Base, landowners have to sign an indemnity form that indemnifies the LHPA and its employees against any actions, proceedings, claims, demands, costs and expenses that result from inju injury to any person, loss of any animal or any other loss. The risk of pinned own use is managed in the various ways. Firstly, property owners are required to undertake a three hour course before they can legally use pinned own baits. However, baits can be bought in hardware stores without any proof that the course has been undertaken and the course does not ensure that wildlife is not at risk. Secondly, Pindone users are supposed to lay a trail of unpoisoned baits and observe the faeces left by animals that take the baits. If it seems that non-target animals have been eating the baits, which are supposed to be laid at night, then a different location should be chosen. This, of course, is not a foolproof method. Even assuming the skill of the landholder in identifying the various droppings, it may well be that non-target animals do not come early in the baiting period when baits are not poisoned. Another way of managing the risk of pindone to non-target species is by putting the baits under a mesh canopy. However, the effectiveness of such canopies is limited. This is an example of the canopies used by Eurobidella Shire Council in conjunction with the LHPA. We did our own experiment using a much more restrictive canopy and found that animals squeezed their way in in order to get at the carrots. Larger animals pushed their heads through the gap in order to get at the carrots. Finally, the baits are supposed to be laid in open areas well away from the bush, but this does not always happen. None of these risk management approaches prevents secondary poisoning to animals that eat rabbits or birds of prey. Risk assessment and risk management are clearly not substitutes for action taken in response to the precautionary principle. Assessing and managing the risk is quite different from avoiding or minimising the dangers. However, Australian governments have moved even further away from the precautionary principle in recent years. The 2009 government discussion paper on a national scheme for assessment, registration and control of use of agricultural and veterinary chemicals, asked the public to comment on the use of the precautionary principle. Yet in the consequent 2013 Decision Regulatory Impact Statement on a National Scheme, the precautionary principle was not mentioned, nor was precaution or caution, whereas there were many references to risk management. The precautionary principle is just a facade and behind that facade the authorities just use whatever means they can to get approval for projects.